Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's boldly go wherever the film takes us. Now, in baseball, the idea of getting a plus 825 underdog, a greater than 8 to one underdog is simply unheard of right in basketball an eight to one underdog would literally be some team playing the Miami Heat in Miami and that team would have to have a losing record right boxing's a great sport to bet on and keep in mind you're gonna have to take chances in boxing to make money. You can't just take favorites straight up to win fights and expect to get decent returns. This is gambling. There is risk involved. Erislandi Lara right now is heavily touted. Many want him to fight Saul Alvarez next, right? The consensus seems to be that Erislandi Lara got robbed when he lost a decision to Paul Williams. He's fighting Freddie Hernandez, whose worst moment of his entire career unfortunately happened the one time he was on HBO in the first round of a fight against Andre Berto. Berto gets a one-punch knockout in that fight. Apparently the public doesn't seem to realize that Freddy Hernandez is an excellent fighter who's 30 and 2. Apparently people haven't figured out that that Andre Berto moment, and it was a terrible moment, is literally the only loss Freddy Hernandez has going back several years. I believe this is a severe Casino mispricing, and I mean severe. Freddy Hernandez right now is a greater than eight to one underdog, right? And I like Arislandi Lara. Lara might well win this fight, but he doesn't deserve to be the favorite he is in this fight. Let's go further. I believe you have an excellent hedge. The hedge is the over eight and a half rounds. Believe it or not, even on the hedge, you're getting better than even money. You're getting a plus 140. The bet I'm recommending is Freddy Hernandez to win the fight at plus 825, eight to one odds, straddled against the over eight and a half rounds at plus 140. Understand that if you bet the same amount on both halves of this bet and either happens, you're making a profit because both halves of the bet are at greater than even money. But understand the risk. If Arislandi Lara does what he has done in five of his last seven fights, and that's get a KO. In fact, his record's even more stunning than that. In five of his last seven fights, Arislandi Lara has gotten a first round knockout. Right? If Arislandi Lara gets a knockout inside of the first eight and a half rounds of this fight, before the midway point of the ninth round, you lose it all. This is purely a speculative play, but understand, if you're going to gamble, you're going to have to take chances. And I think this is a good chance to take because of the high reward, right? It's literally 8.25 to 1 on Freddy Hernandez. Now let's talk about a few things. 
Who is Freddy Hernandez? I think most of the public knows Eris Landy Lara, although I'll get to him. You know, Freddy Hernandez, apart from being an 8.25 to 1 underdog in this fight, actually has fought quality competition. In fact, as a pro, in my opinion, he's actually fought at least as good competition as Eris Landy Lara. You'd be surprised to know that in his last fight, Freddie Hernandez beat Luis Colazo. Freddie Hernandez actually fought, beat by KO. Very tough southpaw. And keep in mind, Laura is a southpaw, Demarcus Corley. It was an excellent fight. I actually have a couple of the videos up right now for those of you doing research on my channel page. In addition, Freddie Hernandez fought Carson Jones, who is about to fight in what I think is going to be a great fight. Kel Brook, right? Freddie, um, Freddie won that fight. Freddie also fought Ben Tacky, a very tough, scrappy fighter. And for old timers, Freddie fought Golden Johnson. Now, while these guys might not be household names, these guys are very solid, very talented fighters. Demarcus Corley, I believe, just beat Paul McCluskey, right? And you will see, Freddie got the fifth round KO in that fight. Hernandez more than holds his own. In fact, if you look through Hernandez's record, you're going to find out that Hernandez has been the WBC Latino welterweight championship holder. Now, how this guy somehow ends up a plus 825 underdog is really a tribute to how much Arislandi Lara, in my opinion, is being a bit overvalued here. Just to put it in perspective, I wouldn't expect Floyd Mayweather against a solid opponent like this to be the kind of favorite that Erislandi Lara is in this fight, right? The odds are simply ridiculous. And if you look closely at Lara's record, what you're going to see is that when he stepped up to fight Carlos Molina, who was coming off of a long layoff, you'll notice that while that fight was a draw, one of the judges, the judge who didn't have it a draw, actually had Molina ahead by four rounds. Molina went the distance with Erislandi Lara. Paul Williams, whether you think he won the fight or not, Paul Williams went the distance with Erislandi Lara. Right? Lara has feasted on guys who have previously been knocked out. And because Lara is a counter puncher, and because his knockouts, kind of like young Mike Tyson, have come a bit too early. I mean, do we really learn a lot about a guy when he's getting first round knockouts every fight, right? In fact, if you look at his last seven fights, while five of them have been first round knockouts, the two that weren't went the distance. Now, Lara is a southpaw. Andre Berto knocked out Freddy Hernandez with a very tightly thrown, pretty straight right hand. I have that video on my channel page as well. But understand, Andre Berto is an explosive puncher, and he threw the kind of right hand that Southpaw Arislandi Lara wouldn't be able to throw. Right? Lara doesn't throw an explosive right hand since he's a Southpaw like Andre Berto does. And what you'll see when you see how Hernandez got knocked out is that Hernandez isn't that sloppy. He has his guard up. 
As Emmanuel Stewart, who was doing the fight, commented, he just didn't back away fast enough. But he wasn't one of these guys who recklessly had his hands down. No, he actually had his hand up. It's just that Berto was able to literally squeeze the punch in, kind of like the knockdown in the rematch between Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao. Right? And so my point to you is this. I think the public is just remembering that Andre Berto first round knockout a bit too much because that is the only time in Freddie Hernandez's career and keep in mind he's 30 and 2 in which he got knocked out you know many might even be surprised to learn that Freddie's first loss which took place in 2005 to Golden Johnson a pretty good fighter was a split decision loss right and so what you have here is a professional fighter who seems to be vastly underrated by the public in Freddie Hernandez and he's going up against a fighter who might just be a smidge overrated by the public Erislandi Lara think about it 16 wins 11 by KO that means five guys have gone the distance with him right five and if he doesn't get the KO against Freddie Hernandez I believe it's an open question on whether he's gonna outbox Freddie Hernandez I believe Laura should be favored in this fight but if I were the odds maker on this fight maybe I'd make him a minus 200 favor favorite not the favorite he is. Some books have him, believe it or not, as a minus 1700 favorite. Right? So when I see a casino mispricing like this, I'm going to try to pass that information on to you. And my point to you is simply the plus 825, the 8 to 1 you're getting on the Hernandez side of the bet is just simply too much. It's too sweet to pass up. I like Hernandez to win at plus 825 straddled against the over eight and a half rounds at plus 140 let me go one step further before I get the emails yes the odds do matter I would not be taking Hernandez unless I was getting significant odds but understand this isn't about picking winners and losers this is about making money grabbing value. When you see a guy who should be a mild underdog priced as a huge underdog and you have a chance to turn one dollar into eight dollars and twenty five cents. In fact, let's back out the hedge, right? Let's say I bet one on each side of it. When I get a chance to turn one dollar into seven dollars and twenty five cents, I believe I have to take it, especially when the guy I'm betting on not only is 30 and 2, and not only has fought quality competition like Luis Colazzo, who went the distance with Andre Berto, Demarcus Corley, Ben Tacky, Carson Jones, Golden Johnson, but also has 20 knockouts, then that's a deal that's too good to pass up. So to sum up, yes, I'm going to be that lone nut here online recommending a play against Erislandi Lara. I like Freddy Hernandez to win the fight at plus 825, straddle against the over eight and a half rounds at plus 140. I think if Freddy can just get out of the first two rounds of this fight, I think this fight's going to go several rounds. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.